This is a preview of Fair Park, A Triumphalist Vision of White Supremacy. This presentation is a part of the Deracialize the Dallas Landscape series, which is part of the Shawnee Project. One of the monuments in Fair Park is the Sidney Smith Memorial Fountain. This is a postcard mailed in 1919 showing the Sidney Smith Memorial Fountain at its former location. These next three pictures are three different views of the Sidney Smith Memorial Fountain in its present location in Fair Park. In the front of the fountain, there is a plaque the Golf Cloud Erected 1916 in memory of Captain Sidney Smith, first Secretary of State Fair of Texas from 1886 to 1912, designed by Miss Clyde Chandler, sculptress. Sidney Smith was born in Alabama in 1839 and grew up on a plantation. He went to the University of North Carolina and graduated in 1859 and started his life as a planter in Mississippi in 1860 with slaves. He enlisted in Nathan Bedford Forrest's corps in the Confederate Army when the Civil War started. He rose to the rank of captain. He remained a planter until 1876 when he left, supposedly, for health reasons and entered the farm machinery business in 1878. In 1886, he was made secretary of the state fair, which he held until his death in 1912. Sidney Smith was a member of the Sterling Price Camp of the United Confederate Veterans, who adopted a resolution when Smith died. The resolution is as follows that Camp Sterling Price heartily approves of the move of the fair and leading associations in the city and the citizens of Texas to erect a monument to the gallant Confederate and good businessman Captain Sidney Smith and that Colonel J.A. Orr of Columbus, Mississippi, the only living member of the Confederate Congress, be selected to participate at the unveiling of the monument at the next state fair in October. Dallas has the Orr Street named after him. It's down by the Dallas Heritage Village. In the late 19th century and the early 20th century, in America and in Europe, there were human zoos where non-white people, often colonial subjects, were exhibited along with other exhibits. This is a postcard of Indians and supposedly a caravan. And this takes place at a zoo in Paris called Jardin de Acclimatation de Paris. The title of this postcard is Les Galles à Jardin Zoologique de Acclimatation. These East Africans are exhibited as zoological specimens like the zebras that stand behind them. These exhibits were set up to emphasize the difference between the white colonizers and the colonized. And one way they did this was to have the colonized be in various states of undress, such as in this postcard at Jardin de Acclimatation. This is a postcard of a French woman at Jardin de Acclimatation viewing an African drinking a French beer. Let's examine this closer. The African is being examined as if he or she was an exotic bug. This is an ad for the Texas State Fair in 1898, which appeared in both the Dallas Morning News and the Dallas Time Herald. At the bottom, you can see that Sidney Smith is the secretary and general manager of the State Fair and W.H. Gaston is the president. One of the attractions advertised is the antebellum 
Negro village. So far I haven't been able to find out much about this antebellum Negro village. I've been looking through the records and the only thing I found is this description in one short newspaper article in the Dallas Time Herald which I'm going to read. Saturday Eve Before the War is one attraction on Amusement Row which is receiving the attention of nearly all the visitors to the fair, especially the ladies, and it is pronounced by them to be one of the most attractive features of the fair. The scene represents the old-time Negro quarters on a big southern plantation on Saturday evening after the day's work is done. All the old uncles and aunties and the little pickaninnies on the plantation are assembled in front of the cabins, and then the evening's frolic begins. There is an old plantation breakdown ending with a cakewalk as the cakewalks were in antebellum days. There is buck and wing dancing by young negroes and negresses, banjo solos, songs, etc. And as an old uncle draws his bow across the strings of a fiddle that may have seen better days but has lost none of its sweetness of tone, the young negroes seem magically touched and such dancing and cutting of the pigeon wing has never been seen since the days of 61. The Negro village is just as true to nature as anything can be. There's not an objectionable feature to the entertainment, and if any person, especially ladies, wish to enjoy a half hour at the same time, get a glimpse of Negro life in the South before the war, this is the place to go. Notice in the text, they're referred to as being true to nature, not true to life, but true to nature, as if they are zoological objects. W.H. Gaston, president of the Texas State Fair, was a Confederate captain during the Civil War. A major street in Dallas, Gaston Avenue, is named after him. The Sidney Smith Memorial Fountain needs to go. Gaston Avenue needs to be renamed.